Ever pondered about the end times? What relevance do Jesus' parables hold for such a time? In a world that often feels on the brink of some great change, there's a sense of urgency, a need to understand the mysteries that lie ahead. This is precisely why the end times, also known as eschatology, hold such significance. It's a topic that sparks curiosity, fear, hope, and a whole lot more. Now, imagine combining this with the timeless wisdom of Jesus' parables. These parables, simple yet profound, were used by Jesus to convey deep spiritual truths. They are stories that have stood the test of time, resonating with people across different cultures and centuries. But what makes them even more intriguing is their relevance to the end times. Understanding Jesus' parables in the context of the end times is like fitting together pieces of a divine puzzle. It's a journey that takes us beyond the surface level of these stories, into the very heart of their spiritual significance. The parables, in essence, are a roadmap guiding us towards understanding the mysteries of the end times. Jesus spoke in parables to make complex truths accessible to all. They were designed to stir thought, to challenge assumptions, to inspire faith. In the context of the end times, these parables take on a whole new level of significance. They become a beacon of light in an often confusing world. So are we ready to embark on this journey of discovery? Are we ready to explore the depths of these parables? to understand their relevance to the end times. It's a journey that promises to be enlightening, challenging, and ultimately transformative. As we delve into this topic, let's remember that the key to understanding these parables lies not just in intellectual comprehension, but in a heart open to divine wisdom and guidance. With this in mind, let us delve into the first of these parables, the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower the first of Jesus' parables in the Bible holds profound end times implications. In this parable, a sower scatters seeds on various types of ground. Some seeds fall along the path and are eaten by birds. Others fall on rocky ground, sprouting quickly but withering under the sun due to lack of root. Some seeds fall among thorns and are choked, while others fall on good soil, growing and producing a bountiful crop. This parable is a powerful allegory for the end times. The seeds represent the Word of God. The various types of ground symbolize our spiritual receptiveness. Those who are like the path are unaware of the Word. Those like rocky ground receive it with joy, but lack depth of understanding. Those among thorns are distracted by worldly worries, but those on good soil understand and bear fruit. As seeds on fertile soil, let's strive to understand and live out God's Word. Next, we encounter the parables of the mustard seed and the yeast. What could they possibly tell us about the end times? In the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus tells of a tiny seed that, once sown, grows into a large tree where birds come to nest. In the second parable, that of the yeast, we hear about a woman who mixes a small amount of yeast into a large amount of flour until all of it is leavened. On the surface, these stories speak of growth and transformation, but what could they mean in the context of the end times? To understand this, let's delve a bit deeper. The mustard seed, though one of the smallest of all seeds, grows into one of the largest garden plants, becoming a safe haven for birds. Similarly, the yeast, though minuscule in quantity, permeates through three measures of flour, enough to feed a sizable crowd. In both parables, something small and seemingly insignificant initiates a process of unstoppable growth and transformation. Now let's draw parallels with the kingdom of God. Like the mustard seed and the yeast, the kingdom of God starts small. It begins with the humble birth of Jesus in a manger, the preaching of the apostles, the faith of the early Christians. But from these small beginnings, it grows and expands, spreading its influence far and wide just like the mustard plant and the leavened dough. What does this mean for the end times? It suggests that the kingdom of God will continue to grow until it encompasses the entire earth. Despite the trials and tribulations of the end times, the kingdom of God will not be stopped. It will spread, grow, and transform the world until every corner is touched by its influence, every heart is reached by its message of love, hope, and salvation. So when we hear about wars, natural disasters, and other signs of the end times, we can take comfort in these parables. 
They remind us that God's kingdom is growing, unstoppable in its progress. Though it starts small, God's kingdom will encompass the earth, a comforting thought as we contemplate the end times. Finally, let's explore the parables of the talents and the sheep and goats. How do they speak to us about the end times? The parable of the talents found in Matthew's Gospel tells the story of a master who, before embarking on a journey, entrusts his servants with varying amounts of money or talents. Upon his return, the master assesses how each servant has used his talents. Two of the servants have multiplied their talents, demonstrating their faithfulness and ingenuity. The third, however, out of fear, has hidden his talent and made no profit. This servant is reprimanded for his lack of faith and initiative. In the parable of the sheep and goats, also in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus describes the end times when he will separate people as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. Those who have shown love and compassion to the least of these, symbolized by the sheep, are welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Those who have not, represented by the goats, are cast into eternal punishment. The implications of these parables for the end times are profound. The parable of the talents emphasizes the importance of faithful stewardship. We are called to use the gifts and resources God has given us to serve Him and others, not to bury them out of fear. We must be active participants in the kingdom, not passive observers. The parable of the sheep and goats underscores the significance of compassionate action. Jesus identifies so closely with the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned, that to serve them is to serve Him. To ignore them is to ignore Him. In a world often marked by apathy and self-interest, these parables challenge us to live differently, to invest our lives in what truly matters, and to see Christ in those around us. In the end times, may we be found as faithful stewards and compassionate neighbors. To sum up, what have we learned about the end times from Jesus' parables? First, the parable of the sower's seeds teaches us about the different responses to God's word. Some seeds fall on fertile soil, signifying those who fully understand and accept the word. The mustard seed and the yeast illustrate the kingdom of God's exponential growth from humble beginnings. Next, the parable of the talents emphasizes the importance of faithful stewardship. Each of us is given talents by God, and we're expected to use them wisely and productively. Finally, the parable of the sheep and goats underscores compassionate action. The sheep, representing the righteous, show kindness to those in need, an action that is seen as service to Christ himself. These parables highlight an overarching theme of spiritual preparedness, growth of God's kingdom, faithful stewardship, and compassionate action. As we ponder the end times, let these parables guide our thoughts, actions, and hopes.